support our coverage using Blueberry, the community that gives creators the ability to make money, get detailed audience measurements, and host their audio and video. Get 30 days to try out the service using promo code BLUEBERRY004. That's B-L-U-B-R-R-Y-004. All right, our next guest is here, and I want to welcome the Leighton Group. Is that who you're with? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Leighton Group. Uh, my name is Antoine. Uh, I'm the managing director of uh, Leighton Sweden. Uh, you probably know Leighton because we're the world leader regarding R&D tax relief and all kinds of uh, grant subsidies that can help companies to uh, basically uh, develop and uh, invest in R&D. All right. So tell me about what you guys are doing here at the show and what the goals are and I guess how things are going. Uh, things are going very well. Uh, we are here because uh, we uh, made a competition for startup uh, all over Europe to bring like three uh, different uh, startups, uh, mainly um, uh, startups that work with uh, sustainability because Leighton is... Uh, uh, I mean, really care about sustainability. And uh, we are also here to release uh, one of our, our last service, which is uh, a platform called Rev, that uh, will help companies from all sides to, uh, how to say, to um, manage their R&D tax relief claim uh, securely um, and also in an automatic way because we also have a huge IT team that work and uh, developed this uh, platform to allow the, the, the company to stay focused on their core business uh, while we take care of this uh, R&D tax relief that's all of them to once more finance their R&D. Are you mostly based uh, with companies out of Europe then or where is the, are you, do, do you operate globally? Oh, everywhere. Everywhere. We're, yeah, we're more than 12 countries. Of course, in US, uh, Boston, San Francisco, but also in Canada. But uh, I'm also coming from, um, uh, like I say, from Sweden. Sure, sure. The, the headquarters is in France. We have like huge subsidiaries in, in Spain, in UK, uh, in Germany. And all those countries, the tax laws are all different. Yes, of course. So. But, but there's like... Um, a lot of similarities because we mainly all have the, the same definition of what is R&D and, uh, and when it comes to, uh, to tax, uh, R&D tax relief, it's, it's mainly um, a technical issue, not a tax issue because you have to prove that what you're doing is R&D for a tax report. And so that's why we have, uh, uh, I mean, we're 2, 000, more than 2,000 uh, employees and most of them are technical per, uh, person because they have like a PhD or they are engineer in order to understand uh, and to make sure that our clients can claim securely the, the, the tax relief. So, you know, this is something I don't think I have much background on, yeah. but how much is being spent, and that just as an example on R&D alone that's getting tax relief here, do you have any idea? Yeah, it's, it's really depending on, on, on the state. Uh, in US uh, and also in Europe it depending but it can go from I would say from 15% relief up to 30%. Wow. Yeah, it's it's quite it, uh, it's big. Very, yeah. And it and it's all and I understand why you, there's a need for you guys cuz it could be very subjective. The tax person may not know Exactly. So that's why also the, the platform that we just released, Rev, uh, will uh, uh, help company to, uh, to, like I say, claim circularly. So that's why um, uh, also our consultant, when they draft the technical report, they draft, they have to, to, to show to the tax administration that uh, it's R&D, but they have to explain it in a simple way. Uh, for, to be sure that the, the, the auditor will be able to understand that it's R&D. So right, right. It, it's, the aim is to find the, the, the good balance between technical and also to be simple, just to, just to be sure that the auditor will understand everything. Yeah, you know, I, I have a tech company that I own yeah. that has a full line of developers, and we have a real hard time determining, okay, we know, we're, we know this is the development we're going to do, this is what we're going to build, but oftentimes we'll say, okay, we have an idea yeah. and do that research, but it ends up being development too. So, you know, where is the dividing line when it comes to 
to getting that type of tax relief? That's a good question, right? Yes, that's a very good question indeed. Uh, so that's why when we work with the company, we first do an assessment of your research and development just to be sure that you comply to the law uh, and to the, I will say, the R&D tax definition. Uh, and then we, t we tell you if what you're doing is R&D, because that's true, especially when it comes to, uh, to software or IT, everything is development. Yeah, so everything. What, so what is development, basically? Uh, so that's why we usually speak of experimental development. So that means we need to show that there is a link with some kind of research. That doesn't mean that it should be your research, but at least you should show that there is a link of research. So that's why the aim is basically to show to the tax administration that any competent professional will face exactly the same issues if they want to develop. Right. If it's the case, then it's probably R&D. I think that's um, for a company like mine, it's pretty small. We're only 23, but still the amount of money I spend on development every year is a big line item. And if I could get a portion of that reduced that was actually R&D, that could be very advantageous. That's a difference between a big or a small tax bill sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And like we like to say in, at Leighton, uh, we don't care about the size. We only care about the R&D. Right. So you can be small and spending a lot of money right. with R &D in R&D, but you can also be big and spending no money in, on R&D. That's true. But what is important is uh, we know that usually when it's the crisis, when it's difficult, the first thing that we got is R&D. Why? Because R&D, if it's real R&D, it doesn't bring money before at least six months or oh. one or two years. So that's why we, we want to help companies to take securely benefit of this kind of relief or all kinds of grant subsidies that you can have to finance your R&D. Because we also know that most of the company today are working with R&D to be more also more sustainable, to make it like a better world. Yep. And so th that's what we want also to help them. So no matter what size are the, uh, the companies, uh, we're here to help. Sometimes I feel like you throw a spitball up on the wall, you know, and if it sticks and it turns into something and it makes you money, you've done good. But sometimes the spitball falls off the wall and you throw it away. So, it, you know, that sometimes is more business risk than actually research and development. So there's probably, again, a fine line there as well, too, right? Yeah, that's right. But what's more, it's why we're here. Yeah. To, to yeah. help you to, to, to draw to, the to, line. To draw that line and say, yeah. okay, this is, this is actually R&D. This was business development that didn't work. Exactly. And you can't deduct this, but you can deduct that. But basically, what you're saying, uh, uh, you have to make the difference between what is research and development and what is innovation. Because innovation is usually an innovation of uh, regarding the market. When we talk about R&D, it's basically acquiring knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it's related to the state of art. And depending on the states, on the countries, it can be a bit different. Yeah. Can research be considered... Um as abstract as just customer studies to determine? No, a, a, a customer study is not research. It's, not research. it's research, but it's not research and development. So it has to be both, has to have both What's components. More, um, if you have to keep in mind uh, something is that it's when it's research and development is acquiring a knowledge. It can be, once more, depending on the states, it can be acquiring a knowledge for the company, but it can be acquiring knowledge for the um, state of art. So you are going beyond the available state of art. Got you. Very interesting. Where can, uh, where can folks find out more information about Leighton? Um, you can go on our website, of course, uh, www.leighton.com, if you're in US slash US, of sure. course. Um, and of course, we, we have a booth. Uh, you can just come with, uh, by and sure. say hello, and we'll be uh, Happy yeah. to introduce you to one of our team. Most of our folks that are watching today are off-site, so they'll definitely be checking out your website Great. and seeing what you guys are doing. You know, here's a topic, Chris, that I didn't even know there was a company out there to help you navigate R&D. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. That, yeah. Is, that is a huge, huge hurdle for anybody with ideas wanting to do stuff because, like he's saying, you literally have to invest that time in being able to find somebody who wants to finance yeah. Well, well, you're also spending real money yeah. to do that. And if you can exactly. get a tax break, yep. you know, some huge. money. It's huge. huge. Hey, thank you so much for being on. We appreciate you coming My over. My pleasure. 
All right, outstanding. Thank you. Thank Bye. you so much. TPN CES 2022 coverage is executive produced by Michelle Mendez. Technical directors are Kurt Corliss and Adam Barker. Associate producers are Nancy Ertz and Maurice McCoy. Interviews are edited by Joe Minnie. Hosts are Marlo Anderson, Todd Cochran, Scott Ertz, Christopher Jordan, Danielle Mendez, and Alante Sparks. Las Vegas studio provided by HC Productions. Remote studio provided by Plug Hits Productions. This has been a Tech Podcast Network production. Copyright 2022.